morning, everyone. Ah, good afternoon, everyone. That makes better. I'm very, very glad to be here. A few things I would like to say before I start up my message. Number one, when I was finding where the church is, I went down the road thinking the church would be somewhere near the street, I mean, corner of the street or inside the street. But then I quickly went back to the Google and I checked it. Then I saw, wow, the church is in the center of the city. I was saying, praise God. At least I found one church which is the center of the city, uh, which is wonderful. And number two, I would like to thank Pastor uh, Jonathan for giving me such a great privilege. Pastor Jonathan not only given me privilege to preach only in this church, but in other churches where you used to work before, um, is greatly inspiring. I always seen him being quiet wherever we go to meeting, when we sit and we talk, he always sit down and he just listen and listen and listen. I was like, when this uh, pastor gonna speak out? But when he speaks, it's very nice of him when he says some real deep words. So I thank God and for such a great pastor. And number two, I would like to thank you all for welcoming me, for loving me, and it's just been a few minutes I really felt home. And I was saying, uh, God, if you want to do something, please let this love reflect in the community and let many people see, you know, we can come down to this church and find Jesus. Another, I'll say, funny thing happened here is I wrote down, I had to change, you know, sometimes when you're about to go somewhere, you plan something, but immediately you have to change because of the circumstance. I came up with a message and I sat in the Sabbath school. It was a, the pastor told me today is the youth emphasis today in this church. But when I came here, I just saw a few youths. Then I didn't discourage. I said, man, I got something else to preach here. So immediately while um, Elder Richard was uh, taking the Sabbath school, I changed my sermon and I made it into one page. So I wasn't gonna take too long. So please stay awake. You know, there is a story in, well, while Paul was preaching, a man slept. And you know what happened to him. All right, you're not going to die, but you're going to spiritually die if you don't listen to it. And the message that I would like to share with you today is we are truly our brother's keepers. And there was an illustration that I would like to use in this uh, message. Apparently, Elder Richard shared that in the kid's story, children's story. I was about to say that in my sermon. So when he said it, when he said about Seventh-day Adventist dog, ah, yeah, I know what he's going to talk about. I took my pen, I scratched it, and I used another illustration. But praise be to God. It's a wonderful day outside. You know, I do uh, certainly believe every Sabbath is not the same Sabbath. You know, every Sabbath is a miracle that we meet, that... We have a great fellowship. Some people won't turn up. Some people will turn up. Apparently some our loving ones goes to sleep on uh, one Sabbath. But praise God, another Sabbath, we have some new visitors keep coming up to the church. And today we have a wonderful weather outside. It's a bit warm and the sun is out. So we thank God for it. Anyway, let's get into the message. Before that, I would like to pray. Let's all close our eyes and pray. Father... This is your time, Lord. It's not me. So please speak to us so that we may prepare our hearts for your soon coming. Lord, I do believe, as you say from the scripture, there is no other great job right now than to prepare our hearts for your soon coming and to tell others the love of Jesus Christ. So Lord, please touch our heart today. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, we live in an uh, unfriendly society. Without me telling you that you see on the newspapers, there are stabbing happening among young people. So far, it's just been April of this year, and I have noticed that in the article, some article says there had been 54 young people died because of stabbing. That's happening in London. And what about in Syria? There are so many young kids, 
forget about politicians, but young kids, children, and teenagers and young adults are being killed because of explosions. And on the other hand, what we see is child abuse and sexual abuse is going around the world. The politicians they vote for right now has come to a place they cannot trust them anymore. But by the grace of God, we as the Seventh-day Adventists, we have a great truth that we can tell to the young people and the politicians and the old people, you know, there is a hope in Jesus Christ. Right now, the Satan's biggest attack is to take away two great things that the Lord has done in Genesis. One is a family. It was Christ who started a family in the Genesis. Man and woman, they got married. And the devil's biggest attack is to destroy a family. Take the young people away from the house. And bring some misunderstanding between husband and wife. And let the uh, family set apart. And let there's no one started to love each other. Let there be a strife between each other. The devil's doing his best. And the devil is also doing his best is to take the truth away from people. Which God gave in the Genesis we see that the Sabbath is the greatest truth that God gave us. And the devil's biggest attack is, okay, let me bring some deception. Let's people started to focus on the problems, but not the solution. And the solution that we have is Jesus Christ and his soon coming. Friends, I would like to say something that was we read, Romans chapter 10. Let's turn our Bible, Romans chapter 10, verse 14. Romans chapter 10, verse 14, the Bible says, How then they shall call on him in whom they have not believed, and how they shall believe in him of whom they have not heard. Now, how they shall hear without a preacher. I would like to describe that scripture even more in another uh, perspective is, without a preacher, a, a group of community, or a person cannot hear the word of God. Without hearing the word of God, they are not going to believe. And if that, without their belief, they are not going to be saved. So there is a problem that my brother is going through. There is a problem that my sister is going through. Not necessarily need to be spiritual battle, but physical battle or mentally battle. You know, even in Adventist churches, we got so many young people are in depression. So many families are under the threat of not knowing what the husband and wives are doing. But here it is. The Bible says, if they believe, they shall be saved. And how they can be saved with a preacher when he preach or someone who goes to their house and when they, say, when they say certain things, they shall believe, say, okay, Brother Richard is saying something to me, so let me give a try. You know, some people said, Jefferson, I tried everything. Then I say, why don't you try Jesus, man? You know, there are certain people that you talk to your problem about knowing that person is going to gossip about to somebody else. But you still say it anyhow. Why? Because you want to take that out from your head. But why don't you try Jesus who keeps the secret within himself? He not only fixed the problem, but he makes a new life for you. And we need some people, and we are truly a brother's keepers. In Matthew chapter 28, we read the Great Commission that Jesus said, Hey, go unto all the nations and make key disciples. That's the word I really like, you know. It's not saying make church members, but he said make his disciples. What does that mean? Make disciples, which means Jefferson, go and tell someone the love of Jesus Christ and let that person start experiencing the love of Jesus Christ and goes to someone else and talk about the love of Jesus Christ. It's two getting into four, four getting into eight is a discipleship. And we really need to get to that level right now in our church and in this year. There are many who are waiting. Church, we need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, there are many who are waiting out in the community, waiting if there is any church member going to invite them to church. Or if there is anyone who can say, hey, why don't we pray? When in the office, when the colleague is going through something, our responsibility is say, hey, I know you don't believe in Jesus, but would you like to pray for you? Would you like me to pray for you? 
or if your friend is going through some sexual abuse, you young people, you know it, that you can tell your friend, hey, listen, we got some church program and we can talk about this from the Bible. Why don't you come down there and get some vegetable pizza? Since I'm preaching, there have to be health message. Vegetable pizza without the cheese. Why don't you come here, have some, and try it? You know, we're not only feeding you just food, but feeding you the Word of God. The Word of God is an intellectual method that it teaches, that directs our head and say, let me try it. It does make sense. You know, there is, the Bible makes it very clear. Don't lie. If you're going to lie, you're going to lose your reputation and your work. It's very clear. So the Word of God actually helps people. You know, friends, I read somewhere, it says, a part-time Christian cannot defeat a full-time devil. We are at great controversy, whereas one side the devil is doing his best to attack the people. Another hand, Christ is stretching his arm as far as he can go to bring people to his side. And we stand in the knowing the truth. And if we don't do anything about it, we are actually in danger. I told my friend one day, man, you being selfish. He said, why? Because you know the truth and you like to share this, but you're not sharing it. You're keeping it with yourself, some treasure that you know about that knowledge. But this is our time, whether we are young or whether we are old. Just reach one. Say we have 20 people in this church. If each reach just one, by the end of the year, we will have 40. Look at the positiveness that God is giving us the truth from the Bible. Like each in the early churches went out and reached not 10, not 20, but just one. If one sinner repents, the whole heaven rejoices. I'd just like to say, in, even in Bury, this is Bury, right? Yeah. Said Edmund Berries, if a one drug dealer coming and sitting here, listening to the word of God, giving his life to Christ, the heaven rejoices. If a prostitute passing by and she says, let me see in this church what can go. But when she comes here and Jesus says, hey, I love you with an everlasting love. And she says, all my life I've been abused sexually. But right here, there is a word of God is preached the truth. And it says, I got you back. And that person, who knows, she can be a singer in the future too. I still believe there are some drug dealers sitting there who can be a preacher. I do believe it is not my will, but it is Christ who changed the people's hearts. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 37, verse 38, the Bible says, Then he, Jesus said, to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. We ran a campaign in Braintree Church, in Braintree Community. You all know about it. It's one of the deadliest uh, communities. They got so much drug dealings. And in fact, they break their houses and they, they rob people's money and laptop and everything. It is such a deadliest community. But however, my dad, who's a pastor of Braintree Church, told me, Jefferson, why don't you do a campaign in the church? I said, okay, that's wonderful. How many days you want? I will give you only three Sabbath days. I said, you're joking. You, you want me to do a campaign in just three days? Yeah, I'll just give you three days. Do whatever you can. But what we did, we called the church. He said, let's sit down and pray about this. And we will do our best because we as a human can do something, but God can do everything. So we sat and we prayed. And when we start praying, can you all hear me, church? Can you all hear me, right? Yeah. So when we sat together, we prayed, and the elder prayed, and myself and the Z were praying. We said, okay, here it is. In three days, we cannot uh, completely focus the 28 fundamentals or the doctrines. Thank you. We cannot completely cover up everything, but we will do this. We will ask the pastor one more day, so we make it four Sabbath days and do something about it. And the pastor said, yeah, go for it. And in the four days, we covered only three angels' message on the love of Jesus Christ. Church, this is what happened. By the grace of God, we ended up that meeting with three people giving their life to Christ. Now, guess what? These three people, one was a Church of England member, another one was a Hindu, another one was Roman Catholic. I'll give you the testimonies how they came to the meeting. One went to a gym 
And one of our church members met at the gym and they said, hey, we're running a campaign. Would you like to come? And he was 62 years old. He said, all right, I'll give a try. And he came to the church and I was preaching about that Sabbath. And he said, all my life I was looking for a church who believes in second coming of Jesus Christ and the Sabbath. And thank God I found this church and he's a Sabbath keeper now. Another one went through uh, some big personal struggle in his life. He tired of his life. He went to a Sunday church and he came back and he sat and he opened the laptop. And the first video that pops out in his Facebook was our message that we preached on life, on Facebook live. He said, Jefferson, we don't, I don't, I don't know how it happened. I just opened the laptop and the first thing that I'm seeing was a three angels message. Church, the people out there are waiting to hear someone calling them to come to church. Or someone calling them, hey, you know, if you can pray. They're a bit shy to ask you for prayer. But when you say it, heaven answers their prayer. And they will say, we truly believe in Jesus Christ too. One sinner, if he turns up, the whole heaven rejoices. That's why Paul is writing to Romans. You know, how they shall, can, how they shall be saved without hearing. How they can hear without the preacher. There is need someone to start up and doing certain things. And... I read in a book, it said, preach the sermon, if necessary, use some words. You know, there is another po uh, uh, a poet who said, action speaks louder than the words. You don't need to preach for 30 minutes or one hour. Sometimes the way you live, people understand there is something in you worth trusting. My dad, my mom, when she was getting ready to come to this country, she had to do some English course. When she had an exam, one of the exams fell on Sabbath. And she said, I'm not going for that. And her friend said, uh, Biji, my mom's name is Biji. Biji, you're supposed to go for this. Because all your family, and, I mean your kids, and your family's financial uh, support comes from this exam and you do it you go to London and you can make more money why are you saying you cannot go you know God understands uh, she said yeah God understands but God loves me so I have to be loyal to him she said under any circumstance I am not going for that exam she kept the Sabbath on the Sabbath evening there was a huge door a huge knock on the door and when my mom opened it Six or two, seven students stood in front of her and said, BG, what type of faith do you have? She said, what happened? We went for the exam on Saturday. We thought it's going to happen. But the lecturer said, sorry, we canceled the exam because of certain things. We moved it to Monday. And so many people joined the church that day and said, we would like to keep the Sabbath too. Friends, there are some people out there, and especially young people, are not looking for Abraham or Moses from the Bible. They are looking for true living testimonies in the church. Sometimes the way you live, sometimes the way you treat your husband, sometimes the way you treat your wife, children look up to you and say, I would like to be like that elder. I want to be like that deacon. I want to be like that youth leader. Why? Because their life speaks about the word of God. We living in a community, people are looking for kindful people. The other day I went to a restaurant, I said, thank you very much with a smile. She's, uh, no, 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 I was working at McDonald's. I'm still working at McDonald's. You know, I'm still a student, I have to survive. So I was working at McDonald's and I was giving out food to a guy through a drive-thru and he looked at me and said, you're the first guy that I'm seeing who smiles even at the end of the shift with a smile on your face. I said, what do you mean? Like, because everyone looks miserable. I said, oh, well, thank God. Oh, thank God. So you believe in God? I said, yeah, of course I do. You know, people are actually looking for each other, some people who can smile, who can speak without swearing. Come on now, it's a simple thing. You know, you're not swearing at all. You don't need to show that you truly believe and show all your 21, 25, 29 fundamentals. Simply, if you don't swear and speak properly for one hour, people will be admired. Hey, you're not, smiling. you're not swearing. That's good of you. Friends, we started to have some ministry going out there in the street through our actions, how we live. Yes, I know there are certain things that we cannot control, but I do believe there is a power in the blood of Jesus Christ. 
I do believe that Jesus died for me and for my sins. I do believe Jesus can work through us to do ministry for many people. We uh, went to South End to preach for a Sabbath, and our sermon was Devil's Deception. After preaching made an appeal, many young people came, and one of the young persons was a drug dealer. He came, and he, st he stood up, and he, he took an appeal. Now, his name is David. David comes from a rich family. His family is all living in states, in, I think in California or something. So he came down here to study. Apparently, he couldn't study. He got into drugs. Now, drugs made him to, you know, how it can change people's life and mentally it cannot affect. At one point, his family doesn't want him anymore. So he was kicked out from his house. He was in the street for a long time. He thought, why don't, let me give a try to go to church. So he came down to church and he sat there and he gave his life to Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm seeing him two weeks after at Newbold College. I was thinking, him, what is he doing here? Now, when I got closer to him, he was full of weed, smells full of weed. I said, uh, hey, David, he's come to me. He said, Jefferson, how are we doing? I said, I'm doing very well, but, you know, you smell this. Well, I'm still working on it, man, but I'm here. I said, doing here for what? Uh, I'm here to study ministry. I said, you're joking. No, I want to tell to other people going through like me, tell about Jesus Christ to them so they can stop believing in Jesus Christ. I, I said, yeah, good luck to that. I left. Two weeks later, I'm meeting him at one of our churches, which is called Jump Church. Jesus, Jesus used messed up people. So we have that church at Newbo. So he came there with a full suit and a good tie, smells good, with a clean shave. I said, okay, David, what are you doing now? He said, I'm working at Range Superstore, trying to save money to do evangelism. While I'm talking to you, David married a Cole Porter in Indonesia, doing ministry together and teaching English to people who can't afford to go to school. Friends, we don't know what sort of people that we have in the street. We are passing by them day by day, thinking they are not being saved by Jesus Christ. Who are we to think that they cannot be saved by Jesus Christ? If Jesus can save us, now let's talk real. We know who we are. And how short tempered we are, how much we lie, how much we gossip. If God can save us, you think it's hard for God to save them? It is easy and it is possible. Jesus is saying, I'm same yesterday, today, and forever. And I am the Lord, I change not. And if Jesus can change a persecutor, a Paul, he can surely change some persecutors right now in this country. If God can touch a Rahab, who, was a who she was a prostitute, and put her on the genealogy of earthly Jesus Christ, what makes you to think that we cannot touch a prostitute in St. Edmunds? Surely he can. But we need to be ready and willing to go and reach out to them. He say, hey, Jefferson, you know, I'm too young. I, have, I don't know the Bible. You know, we some young people. You, brother, I'm looking at you and I'm telling you. You think that, you know, in your school... You cannot do it because you don't know the deep depth of the Bible. No, man. Your simple testimony, your simple prayer to your friend will say, wow, this is something. Thank you very much. We had a baptism recently in our Chelmsford church, and we had a massive day. You know how baptism, everyone comes up. We don't have a seat. They don't turn up for the whole 300, I mean, 52 Sabbaths in a year, but they change, come up on that one Sabbath. So the church was packed. And one of our baptism candidate best friend came up. And he saw the way we live in the church and both outside, in the, uh, outside of the church. And he said, I really like your church. I'm going to start coming up. And he started to come to our church every Sabbath. He's not baptized yet, but thank God he's still in the boat. We don't know. Now think about it. If your friend who hearing the word of God and he started to believe in Jesus Christ and start walking with Jesus Christ, it is good for you that you're going to heaven with your best friend. And one day you go to heaven and he comes up uh, to you old folks, I mean young old folks, I'm telling you, you guys are still beautiful, still active, but let me tell you, you passing by in the street, 
and you give a pamphlet to, uh, say, someone, but you don't know what that person is going through. But since he saw the pamphlet, Steps to Christ, wow, praise God, there is something in it, and he's reading it. And when you get to heaven by the grace of God, and that person rushing to you and you say, thank you so much for the pamphlet. And you ask, who are you? Oh, in St. Advents, that Sunday you gave me the steps to Christ. I read it. I gave my life to Christ. I was a criminal. How it would be? How it would be that you touched a person through the blood of Jesus Christ? And here is the problem that we church things. And I would like to say this today. It is the work of the Holy Spirit to change people's heart. Not ours. We are just the speakers. We are just here to tell people. But it is the work of the Holy Spirit to touch people's heart. And we should not be annoyed if people is not turning up. Praise God, at least some are turning up. And God will touch them. And I do believe if God can touch a prostitute in my own, uh, there was a girl, I don't want to say her name, because she just graduated from Newbold a few years ago. But this girl was raised in London. She had a relationship with a guy. I still got time, right? Or I was, I'm good. Just tell me when, I want, or when you want me to finish. Because I'm not prepared today. I'm just saying it out. This girl, she was in relationship with a guy. And this guy used her so badly. You know what I'm talking about. We got kids in our church. And she believed this guy so much because she didn't have good love from her family. But she thought, this is the right guy who can give me all the love. And she trusted. And she did whatever the guy asked her to do. At one point, she found out that this guy was recording the video of her doing certain things. And he said, threatened, he threatened her saying, if you don't bring your sister next time, I'll put this video on Facebook and Instagram and everything. She broke down and she said, I didn't know what to do. So she took a decision to give her life up. So she went to a school into the toilet and she was about to give her life away. But somewhere she heard, child, why are you doing this? She said, Jefferson, I don't know if there is anyone next to my door like you cannot see it but I heard a voice but if it's Christ or someone I decided to go back to the Bible and read it and she came back to Christ and she today she finished a the theology and she said I'm gonna work for many young people friends there are so many blessings that God have blessed you with what are we doing with it Revelation 12 says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. You know, when you share your testimony with somebody, the devil flee from that place. And that person is free from the devil because he have heard that Jesus saves. And when he hears it, he will stop believing it. And when he believes it, he will be saved. Not because you said it, because the Holy Spirit convicted his heart, convicted her heart. So from, from right now, Let's make a decision. Say, I'm going to give my life to Christ already, but I'm going to give my life for ministry. Not necessarily need to go to New Bold or Andrews or Oakwood, but simply my biggest lesson that I can get is from the Bible and the Spirit of Prophecy. I will take it and I'll make a goal once in a month or once in a week. Uh, let's keep it with once in a month, all right? We'll start from, you know, we don't need to go for amateur. We'll start from, you know, slow level. Said, once in a month, I'm going to do evangelism. I'm not going to wait for the Global Youth Day, but I'll start once in a month. I'll reach someone. I'll pray with someone. No need to be the church member, but someone in the street who's going through some serious struggle. You know, friends, it's happening in London. As my brother said, I was so terrified when I saw this. I thought these are young kings and queens of you know, community are dying. We cannot start, keep on seeing that every, every morning we wake up or four died last night or six died last night. No, we cannot keep on looking at it. So what are we going to do about it? Let's start as a church do some, doing evangelism to reach out to the young people or reach out to the old people 
Or reach out to the parents and say, hey, listen, you need to take seriously about your kids and start raising up as Christ wants them to be raised up. And when we see it, I pray in the name of Jesus, miracle happen in St. Edmunds. And without doing a campaign, people will fill up these chairs. Enough is enough. We've been wasting our time. It's okay. But right now, we'll start up and say, we will move it with Christ and do this work. You know, in Matthew 28, the Bible says, I'm finishing now. Matthew 28, the Bible says, Lo, I am with you until the end. Jesus says, I'm with you. If Christ is with us, why do we need to be afraid of sharing the gospel to people? If Christ is real, if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, why do you need to be afraid of preaching the truth? If you believe that the signs of times is coming to an end, you know, Jesus haven't come yet. But before that, as according to prophecy, there is going to be a great time of trouble. The book of Amos says they will run to and fro seeking. There will be a famine in the last days. What is the famine about? It's not about bread and water, but to hear the word of God. They will go running to and fro east to west. They can't find it. If there is any time for Bury Church, Bury's Church to get up and to go out to the community and they say, listen, my brother, Jesus is coming soon. You better get ready. If people want to hear it or not, you're just saying it. You have done your work. Book of Ezekiel says, I set you as a, son, a watchman upon the hills, and you need to say it outside. If you say it, the blood is not in your hand. You've washed out because you have done your job. It's like doing a health and safety course. You tell your staff, hey, when the fire comes, that's the way you, to escape. You have done your job, and it's up to the staff whether to go out or stay in. And if they want to stay in, a mercy to them. If they get out, praise the Lord for that. But end of the day, our biggest job is when we leave this church today and from tomorrow morning, forget about being a Saturday Seventh-day Adventist. Let's start seven days Seventh-day Adventist and see the people as your brothers. See that people as your sisters and tell them, why don't you try Jesus? If you believe that, if anyone wants, now I'm, not very, I'm very serious about this. If you believe that and if you want to do that evangelism, stand up, I'll pray with you. If anyone believes it, if you don't want it, you can sit down. You can chill, take your time and think about it. But if you do truly believe it, yes, I want to start making change in the community. Not by intellectual or philosophy or psychology, but simply by the word of God. I'm going to touch some people's heart and I'll let the Holy Spirit work in that. If you believe it, Please stand up and we'll pray with you. All right. So thank God. God, I've seen that you've taken an appeal. And my dad always told me, Jefferson, don't play with God. So I thank God for this church that we are making a decision that we're going to reach out and tell people Jesus is coming soon and Jesus is our only hope in these last days. He's our only hope. He's our ultimate helper. You know, the Bible says, the righteous, I, David says, I've been old and I, I've been young and I've been old and I still haven't seen righteous begging for bread. And you have testified, you have witnessed in your personal life that how much Jesus has been good to you. Don't you want to share that message to so many people out there in the street? If you believe that, close your eyes, we will pray. Father in heaven, we come to that presence as a, as a church here in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, please give us the courage to speak to people. Give us wisdom to take this gospel and make it simple and tell it to the people. Oh Lord, in our own house, if we find some people who's not doing right, help us to tell them the truth with love, with peace with compassion at heart. Lord, give us the passion that Jesus had for the dying soul. Give us the passion that of those apostles who did the great job in early churches. Lord, give their passion. Give, give us the passion like them. Oh, Father, please, in these last days, we asking you to pour out the latter rain upon this church so that we may go out and reach people and bring people not to to show off that we have a church with a lot of members, but to show even though we have 10, we 10 are ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, please. There are some old, old people out here. 
give them strength, give them financial needs, and Lord, give them uh, assurance that Jesus is still looking after them. And we are, we are praying for the young people, O oh Lord. Father, just because they have done one sin, I know it, Lord. When I did that first sin, I thought that I'm washed away, but your mercy endureth forever. And your grace holded me, and he said, you said to me that you can still walk again. So just like the Lord, if there is any young person here thinking that he did something which brought a shame to Christ's name, Lord, please show your mercy to him. Show your grace to her. And Lord, let your love bound their life and say, I want to walk with Christ again. And Lord, please let this church be a lighthouse for this St. Edmund's community. That when a person is burdened down by the devil, let them come inside and sit in this church and hear the word of God and hear this beautiful singing and say, I want to stay in this truth. Not in this building, but in this truth, knowing that Jesus is soon coming. Oh, Father, please, we pray. If there is anyone who's going through some serious sickness, you heal them in Jesus' name. If there is anyone who's going through financial needs, oh, Lord, please sort out their debts in Jesus' name. And I pray if there is any great need that this church must have to please you, let that happen today. So we may do the things that we're pleasing in your sight, in love and in peace. In Jesus' name, amen.